Thank you so much for your time, Johnny. Oh, so, you know, it's been almost five years since your first time here in Mexico back in September 2019. And a lot has changed since then. We went through a pandemic. We had to stay creative despite the difficult times. What do you remember from that show here in Mexico? The last show that we went? Yeah. Pretty amazing. It's already five years since we've done the last one. But yeah, the last time we came, uh, that was our very first visit in Mexico. But yeah, the audience was so crazy loud. And yeah, they were so enthusiastic. And we can't we can't even forget yeah, what we experienced there. The, the audience was so great on a very first day, uh, very first show in Mexico. And we can't wait to see you guys again. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? When you compare it to other countries, we Mexicans and in, in general, Latin America has this uh -huh. very passionate feeling about music. Uh huh. Definitely. Um, you guys are like sing singing each and every lyrics in the song. So, so we it was so loud. I uh, really appreciated, yeah, you know, the passion and the energy that the Mexican fans had. And you know something that's very curious. It's that uh, some of the sometimes there is a language barrier. You th you would think that, well, mm -hmm. for example, we don't necessarily speak Japanese. Some may, but mm -hmm. lots of people don't, and we still mm -hmm. know all the lyrics. And do you think that changes the way you perform on stage right at the moment where you're when you're playing? Uh, you mean sing, uh, people sing into it? Uh, yeah. Does it change? Oh, well, the reaction, it always, you know, boosts us, uh, energizes us as well, you know, uh, seeing the audience enjoying it uh, from the bottom of their heart, that that encourages and makes us, you know, boost a lot. So, yeah, it's always it's always a pleasure seeing that passion. Yes. <clears throat> That's something that also works for me, you know, as, as a musician, I understand that and I know how it can help you deliver an even better performance. It changes mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. What else do you think has changed for you as a person and as a band of, during the last five years? A lot has happened since then. Mm -hmm. um, you're probably like uh, noting what happened uh, in the whole wide world of the pandemic stuff. Uh, but yeah, it probably made us realize that we especially the music industry was really not uh you know good in handling that kind of situation because we have to gather in one place that's actually not really good for air conditioning and stuff like that a lot of people were probably you know, you know they were damaged a lot during this five uh, th this three years but uh it also probably made us realize that we we weren't like using our technology as well uh, even though uh, it you know uh, it has developed so so much but we haven't used like streaming performances uh good enough it really made us realize that we had the opportunity and actually we had the you know we had the uh, infrastructure already but we didn't use it enough uh, a lot of people started streaming kind of stuff and it really made us realize that uh this can be a new way of spreading music as well well i definitely uh recommend you know real live shows but uh also streaming that really opened up a lot of uh, opportunities to, to this world as well so i guess it was a hard time for us but at the same time made us realize uh, many things as well yeah yeah and it opened it opened up many doors in terms of collaboration with many other artists it's, is there yeah, anyone definitely. you would like to work with that it wouldn't be physically possible before all the technology and everything that was developed since then mm -hmm. Anybody that I would like to uh, collaborate with? Well, um, yeah, I can think of many artists, like all the heroes that I've been listening to, like Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins, uh, people like that. But also like uh, upcomers, new artists are really doing very inspiring work now these days. So whoever I can think about, I mean, yeah. Uh, Billy Eilish. Uh, well, actually, his brother, her brother. Yeah, he was probably the one who's composing. Yeah, Phineas, it. right? Uh -huh. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I can't finish my list. Yeah, there's there are too many talented people in the whole world. Yeah, that's something that's also very incredible. The amount of talented people that have 
come up and just raise their hands and said, hey, we're making a lot of great music. I want to share it with the world. The mm -hmm. thing is that there is not necessarily enough room for everyone in terms of success. And it's a hard battle constantly. You yeah. have experienced many decades, you know, uh, you've learned and listened to a lot of music. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone that's just getting started, someone that wants to become the next the next famous person in line, the next Jimi mm -hmm. Hendrix, as you will? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, uh, any advice for me you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, well, that's pretty that's a pretty hard question because I'm really struggling at that about that at the same time. But um well, although like the situation has been changing like during this decade a lot for people composing music or even listening to it because all the technology developments stuff like that, especially like uh, the sound has changed a lot uh, in the music scene as well. But I guess the bottom line is it never has changed that. It's always about like evolving the music scene uh evolving what we can add the new style whatever but also at the same time like thinking about the heritage of the music whatever i we stuck to rock we were a big fan of rock music and it was always about like trying to evolve adjust to the new era but at the same time uh passing out uh passing to the next generation the heritage that we've experienced from rock music and i guess that's the most important thing to do if you're a composer you have to be a big fan of the history of uh music but at the same time have the ambition and the inspiration to move it forward to the latter you know generation that's a great point and yeah. speaking of history i know that you hi you guys have been together for a very, very long time. Many fans here in Mexico, it's going to be their first show with Man With A Mission. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about your story? How did this come to be? Why is this now something that you want to do with your life? Oh, uh, performing overseas in, um, in Mexico? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in general, performing music, doing this for oh. a living. Okay. Um, I... Me myself, I'm I myself um, am just uh, like same as you guys. I'm just a big fan of music. I was once a follower of like many bands, a rock music, especially what was going on in the '90s. And one day, I just thought that like creating this and being part of this uh, might be something really exciting. And that was only the the first the first thought was like just I I, I like music, something like that. But as I made a couple of songs well uh went on with our career it, it became more and more important for me to making music and clinging to the world because it, it was always what i wanted to do oh yeah the first time i saw like a video of like a music festival or something like that it was probably glass and berry or maybe woodstock or something like that but um the audience uh waiting for the next band coming the the atmosphere was so beautiful they they were not they were never caring about like which country this band comes from or like what kind of, uh, you know, uh, character is behind the band, but they were just waiting for the music, the band itself, well, the music, you know, and I saw like sensed like true borderless way of spirit in that a lot of people say music is borderless, but I've definitely witnessed like sometimes we have preconceptions, you know, preconceptions about like people uh, coming from another country, what kind of music do they make, something like that. It's not not being like racist or something like that, but we always have preconceptions about a lot of culture, uh, different different culture and stuff like that. But when it came to music, when it came to the, the atmosphere waiting for that band, it, that was totally, we didn't even have to say a word about that. That was totally borderless. They were just waiting for the music. And I believe that energy and power is one of the most beautiful things that music can make. And yeah, I kind of was really astonished and amazed and inspired. And I would love to choose. I would love to be in part of that beautiful culture. That was why I started this band. <clears throat> Once again, we come back to the topic of passion. You know, like I said, as Mexicans, we are very passionate about music and about a lot of stuff. And I'm sure you understand the feeling as a musician. As a wolf, you surely understand that there is always hunger for more. What are you hungry for? Where will that hunger take you now? What do you want to do? 
Mm, yeah, it's, you know, uh, we are proud of what we did today. We have accomplished uh, since whenever we started then. But at the same time, that draw, that hunger, it's always a big motive of what we try to do. I guess, you know, it's, it doesn't have a goal. Like what the, the dream that I was talking about, like being, a borderless kind of band. It doesn't have a goal. It's not about the amount of people or like the amount of uh, the listeners, but at the same time, uh, you want more. Yeah, I can't really explain any words, but it's not like we're like devastating for like spreading our music to the whole wide world or something like that. But that is uh, energy and a beautiful thing that we would love to, you know, see more and more people getting absorbed to our music and stuff like that. And most of all, like, uh, Imagining how what I feel when I experience that, yeah, that's probably the main key to our hunger. Or it it should be, it's a way of uh, thinking that like I might be excited if I did that or this or something like that. Yeah, uh, thinking about what I can feel if I experience uh, a lot more. That's the main motive of what we're doing right now. Yeah. <clears throat> That's, I really like that that perspective. Instead of thinking of all the success, maybe the fame, the money and everything, it's all about the music. And that's something that has been lost in the last couple of decades, maybe. Now, something more trivial. It's getting very hot here in Mexico as we get a closer, yeah, closer to the I'm summer. Aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to prepare for that? We know that you have incredible brain power and superhuman physique, but what yeah. else are you going to do? Well, we can't do anything about that. When it's hot, it's hot. So, <laughs> yeah, we're just trying to get used. Uh, you know, Japan's um, getting hotter now these days, but in compared to Mexico, it's probably not a big problem. So, yeah, we're going to have a hard time uh, performing in Mexico. But, yeah, we're not, truly speaking, we're not prepared for anything. We, we've always, uh, we've already experienced the last time it was really hot, but like the energy that the audience brought us, you know, it, it made us uh, forget about everything, you know. So I'm really looking forward for that. Yeah. Too much. You're going to do fine. Yeah. Too much enthusiasm. Yeah. It makes you forget about everything. So that, yeah, we're definitely having going to have a lot of help from that from the audience. And, you know, something that's different now from when the last time you came is that you are now related to Demon Slayer, something that's mm -hmm. an absolute phenomenon right now. Mm hmm. Each of the series, the shows you have worked on, has different themes, different characters, scenarios. How does that change the way that you write each song, each opening, each ending? Oh, uh, you're talking about like other products that we've done, like uh, yeah, anime. Seven Deadly Sins, My Hero mm -hmm. Academia. Um, they are like different stories and like totally different kind of masterpieces on on their own. And um, but at the same time, whenever we like. Uh, take part in a song um we didn't really like i'm not i'm not sure if i'm saying it the right way but we we never expected like every and each story um so linked to the the philosophy of the band already has but i kind of you know uh think that w luckily all the collaborations that we've done so far um, we're already uh, a big fan of what they make. You know, I'm a big fan of animation, like stories and manga, uh, movies and stuff like that. And all the stories, uh, some of them I never read about, but as soon as I read it, I could I could find out like the background of the writer or some or anybody that we have a lot in common. Maybe it's because we're from the same generation. Well, we're wolves, so I'm not really sure I'm saying the right thing. But yeah, we definitely have something in common, you know, and it makes us a lot more easier to uh, deliver our method, de de deliver our theory and philosophy to the song yeah, related to that and animation. So yeah, being a fan of... Not only the product, but the culture of what animation and manga has might help us a lot in like making songs for each and every product. Yeah. And is there any show, any series, maybe a movie that you didn't get to write music for, but that you would have loved to do it? Oh, I'd love to. Um, yeah, um, we had a chance to do the song um for k 
King Kong versus Godzilla. And that was it for the Japanese series. But that was really amazing. You know, just like animation, Godzilla is also a phenomenal like, character, a symbol of what Japan uh, delivered to towards the world. So I really was inspired and, yeah, a pleasure working with that. Um, that's probably, like, one of the things I really want to do. Um, like, uh, take part in... Uh, something Japan has symbolic to, to, uh, towards the world. But um, yeah, writing a song for that, you know, J- Japan, Japanese product. But at the same time, I really love to have the chance to uh, write the main theme uh, that's uh, all over the world. Because uh, when we wrote the song for Godzilla, it was only for the Japanese market, you know. Uh, the global market was probably another artist. But we would definitely love to have the chance to do the main theme for the whole wide world yeah yeah i think that would be a good opportunity too and uh, speaking of historical opportunities if you could collaborate with a single artist that has already passed on who would it be a pass on you mean okay. yeah they they already died mm-hmm. oh that's that's a hard one well I'm sure he'll never say yes, but I mean, Kurt Cobain uh, was one of my, you know, well, that he he'll, he'll never say yes to that. <laughs> I can't imagine him collaborating with anybody, but yeah, I'd definitely love to have a chance to. I, I don't even have to collaborate with him. I just I only have I only want to talk with him. You know, a, a couple of words with him. Um, who else? What would you ask him? Ask him. Um, I don't know what you're worried about, brother. (laughs) 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 Yeah, but uh, the lyrics, how they uh, just like normal, you know, normal people, you know, I would love to just talk about what kind of like music he was inspired with. We we always see that on the interviews and stuff like that, but more than that, not only like songs, but like what kind of books, what kind of movies he was looking, uh. You know, checking out because it's always a pleasure. It's always makes me excited. And where my favorite artist, my my favorite creator gets the inspiration from, it's you know the product itself is also amazing. But it's always uh, a lot of fun, like asking them what what kind of you know what kind of guy yeah like outer inspiration they get from like others. Yeah, it's always a lot enjoyable, like finding out about that. <clears throat> and, you know, something that I love about inspiration is that it can, it can come in any shape or size. And all of us, wolves, humans, demons, layers, regardless of how good we are at what we do, we make mistakes. It's something mm-hmm. that helps us learn and improve. Do you remember any mistakes that have taught you valuable lessons? Oh, I've made a lot of mistakes that I'm not even sure if I can, you know, say on radio or stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of mistakes that I've made. It's not only like the mistakes that you may make by your own, but well, it's always up to you. So I guess it's all always your fault. But like some some words, some thoughts that you should never have said to another person or stuff like that. Yeah, that's the ones that make you regret a lot. And well, at the same time, it makes you learn, but it also makes you disappointed in what you are. So yeah, uh, I guess I've went through a lot. Well, I guess you have to. I mean, um, I'm not really sure if I can note it or something like that, but definitely made mistakes. I'm really not proud of, but at the same time, I'm really proud of what, uh, not 100%, but we're really proud of what what I am today. You know, it's all about that putting, getting scars, getting ble- bleed a lot, you know, and learn. But you have regrets, you have mistakes, but you always have to look that that's what, sh- that's what has made you today. So I guess I'm... Um, not really happy, but satisfied in what I am today. <laughs> yeah, I think we all of us can agree and that we just make mistakes we're not very proud of, but we have to get up. And sometimes we use music to get up. Mm-hmm. 
What's that song that helps you get back up and continue fighting? Mm -hmm. Oh, particular song from another artist or something like that? Yeah, or maybe your own catalog, whichever song you like most. Um, maybe a song that you say, okay, I feel like I'm not performing the best show right now, but this next song is coming up and this one will help me get the energy I need to finish everything on a high note. <laughs> uh, well, I'm talking about like songs that really pushes pushes me, encourages me a lot. Um, like, um, I don't know, "One Hand in My Pocket" from Alan is Smarset. Yeah, I love that song. Well, actually, uh, "Learn" is a good song too. Uh, she is an artist that a lot of people like. Sometimes say that it's too. Uh, sobby or something like that, but at the same time, it really makes me feel that she she has her own scars and she's really great in sharing it to the audience. The lyrics that she writes, you know, and well, the vocal style that she has, you know, she's an amazing artist herself. Yeah, those two songs really push me a lot, make me notice that. Yeah, you got to sometimes be those songs may be considered guilty pleasures by some, particularly from those in the rock community that say, oh, that's not rock, I'm not going to listen to that. What would you say to someone that says something like that? Oh, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, rock, I mean, in any genre, you know, like, I am a big fan of rock music, but at the same time, I'm, I'm a fan of music itself. You know, uh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, like, you shouldn't have a narrow point of view when you listen to music. Yeah, it's always about the spirit, man. Sometimes you can listen to classic and it's more rock than <laughs> whatever kind of band that you're listening to right now sometimes. Yeah, you know, you never should have a narrow perspective in anything. So, yeah. <clears throat> and now we're going to have you soon here in Mexico, here in our country. What can the mix Mexican crowd expect from your show? What's going to be different from five years ago? Well, five years ago, we weren't aware of how loud you guys were, but this time, like, uh, we're totally prepared for that. And at the same time, that means we're expecting more. So, yeah, we're definitely going to have a greater time than the last one. And we hope you guys are ready, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think it's going to be louder, particularly because of the Demon Slayer phenomenon. Okay. I, I don't know if you've noticed how huge that is over here. It's insane. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm really yeah, I'm really looking forward for that. Yeah. Now, if, if you could only play one song out of your entire set for the rest of your life, which one would it be? Oh, I never want to think about that. That's so boring. <laughs> <laughs> that is so boring. I should never do that. <laughs> one song? Yeah. One song. Yeah. Well, since you have to stick to that one, um, I'll probably choose a really smooth one, you know. It's, <laughs> Uh, you have to stick to that one till you die. So, uh, one song, yeah, a smooth one, like Akatsuki or something like that. Yeah. Okay, that's Please. a good one. No, no, no loud ones. Yeah, I want, I want to be in peace. <laughs> yeah, particularly because we don't know how long we're going to be doing this. Maybe we're going to yeah. be doing it a hundred years from now. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I don't think I'm going to have the same energy in a hundred years from now than <laughs> I have right now. Okay. Oh, oh, and that that way of thinking, that's a great question, you know. And it has to be, it has to stay in hundred years. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you had to drop one and never play it again, which mm -hmm. one would it be? Drop one and never play it again? Yeah. Oh. Drop one. You mean drop as, yeah, get rid of it from the list or something, yeah. like that, right? Okay. Yeah, never play it again live. Never play it again live. Um, let's see. No, I would never do that to, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's it's like that's, choosing between all of your children, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, you should never do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, very difficult, but we're going to be very happy to see you here in Mexico in a, a very in, in a couple of weeks' time. It's going to be a great experience, I think. And I thank you very much for your time. It's no, no, it's it was my pleasure talking with you. Thank you very much. Can't wait to see you guys in Mexico. Yeah. Anything else you want to share with your Mexican fans? 
Um, as we said, um, I didn't. I didn't notice that it has been five years since the last game to uh, the city. We've always talked about, yeah, I talked to a lot of people that how crazy you guys were uh, when you f- first visited uh, Mexico. And yeah, we're looking forward for more. And please be, be ready for what we're going to bring you guys. It's going to be crazy. And thank you so much for your support. Uh, can't wait to see you all. Uh, this was Johnny from Man with a Mission. There you have it, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu.